May the fragrance of total submission be the only defense that I need. Broken and spilled out just for love of you, Jesus, my own precious treasure lavished on thee. see the cynical parents we had they were so cool that's what we're, Ron has been looking for years to find one to replace that cynical and uh, we haven't found one but maybe one of those me in your armor as I take up the shield of faith for you are my stronghold my heart will not fail brother-in-law raised it from an egg he hatched it and everything when it got big enough he gave it to us It was so friendly. I mean, we're talking like, it, not everybody could handle it. I was the one that could handle it. Me and Jasmine were the only ones. Wouldn't let anyone else handle it. Well, that's what they say when you get a bird, you go to, a, like we went to this one lady's house. She had this huge house, about 3,500 square foot. There wasn't any place there wasn't birds, huh, Rhonda? She had birds wall to wall. And she, and she had a what they call a nursery, like a room about half the size here, and it was just full of baby birds. Just fill. She says, you go in there, stand in the middle of the room, and whatever bird comes to you, that's your bird, because it picks you. And that bird came walking across the floor and went up my leg and, and got up on my shoulder and sat there and went, and I guess we're taking you, right? <laughs> so that's the way it was. Yeah. I'm not live yet. I still got a minute. Am I live? According to the clock, it's, oh, we're live, okay. All righty, we're here. Amen. Everybody else isn't. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Oh, you amen. said amen? No, she said amen. She said amen. She said, good, no one else is here. That's what she no. said. I heard it here first, folks. Okay, we're on lesson three, right? Lesson three. And I, I, I marked where we finished. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. Amen. We're in, the, <laughs> we're in the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. I remember uh, Bill Bramblett, first time I ever heard this said, but Bill Bramblett said it. He says, you know that guys are supposed to make the coffee because he brews. So, that, I mean, that's the first time I ever heard that was from him. And I was like, <laughs> but now I've heard it a million times. So, so <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's with a K, not a C. All right. <laughs> All righty. Well, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, that we can look in the book of Hebrews. And God, I just pray that you get the glory from it. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Is there anybody who needs the, the last three pages of notes? The last three pages of notes. Let me see here. I got them. I thought I put them in here. Yes, I did. You need, you need them? Okay, Brother uh, Robert needs them. Hang on. There's page one, 
page two. There's two pages. Hang on. Page three. Oh, I got two of the same, yeah. Two of the same, that's the second page. And then, let me see here. There's page, what you called it? Four. No, three. Okay. There's four. See, page, what you would call it? Does everybody got page, what you would call it? Yes, that's <laughs> right. Hang on a second. looking here all right so he got the last three pages and we were at lesson lesson three we're moving right along we're all the way to chapter two moving right along we just got we only got a bunch of chapters to go <laughs> but we're moving right along amen we just prayed right I'm glad you guys knew that. Amen. Amen. Now we were talking about the angels confirming. Uh, the word of the angels were confirmed that they what they said was was uh, true, and that they were to, they were called the people were called to heed what the angels said. And then in chapter two, and that's chapter two, and here we here we find ourselves uh, um, supposed to listen to one greater than the angels. And we'll read that here. We'll read, let's read verse 1 through 3. It says, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast. What's that steadfast mean? Anybody remember? What? Firm. Unmovable. Can't be moved. You know the song? I shall not be moved. I shall, where else does it say steadfast in the Bible? Um, something 58? Yeah. How about a very famous passage of Scripture? It's Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18. The whole armor of God it says it many times. <laughs> Stand with all stand. Tells us to stand steadfast. No, that's being not movable. We we have a firm foundation. That's why we sing a firm foundation. Amen. Amen. Because it's immovable. It's steadfast, and that's where we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be steadfast. And he's saying right here, the word spoken by angels was steadfast. I mean, you can guarantee it came from God, because see, the world's words and Satan's words are not steadfast. They're movable. They'll change. Lies change. Truth never changes. Truth, look, get that in your heart and mind, kids. Truth never changes. If truth changed, it's not truth. They say it's truth and it changes. Not truth. So, uh, homosexuality was an abomination to man and it changed. Huh? That means it really wasn't true. See, uh, homosexuality is still an abomination to God and was, is, and will be never changing. They asked us, when I took Bible and science in school, they asked me, write a subject where people said it was true and it changed. You know what I wrote on? Smoking. Because, see, before 1963, I think it was, when the, when the Surgeon General came out and said smoking causes cancer, they didn't think it did. People were smoking. Even Christians were smoking. They had, they had chewing and smoking on the porches of the Baptist churches in the South. Huh? They used to put their spit cups out on the, out on the, the rail. And they, they, they couldn't take it in the church. They put it on the rail, had their little name on it, little markers or whatever. And then when they went back out, they picked up their spit cup. So they could chew outside on the porch. Because they didn't cause cancer. Yeah, there was nothing wrong with it. No, there is. Want to know why? Because it, it was a lie. Huh? It was a lie. Now, drinking is wrong. What are they saying now? Drinking is okay. 
It changed. No, no, they, they take, they, they, they're lying to you. See, constantly changing things. When they change it, see, when Barack Obama says he's going to stand on the, the, his platform was going to be changed, I had a problem with it. The Bible says beware of those who, who uh, I can't remember, it suffers change or something like that. It says in Proverbs, it talks about, beware of these folks. And that came right to my mind right away. So I was, I was leery of him, still am. Huh? <laughs> change, change, change. You know, but you know what Trump says, make America great. Okay? You make America great. Well, America is great. He's, he's going to make, keep it that way. He wants to keep it the way it was. See? They want to change it. See? They, one way, do you want to know how you can tell it's a lie? They, change, they try to change the book. Hmm? They got the NIV, NASV, ESV, and New King James, all these versions, these perversions, script over 400. You want to know what they did? They're changing. Be careful. It's got to be steadfast. You can guarantee what the angels said was what the angels, uh, what, what came to pass, what God allowed to come to pass. It, what they said came true. If it, look, God says this about prophets in the Old Testament. You can always tell if it's his prophets, if what they said came, came to pass. See, many a times the prophets, like the Ahab had 400 prophets, they said that he'll have victory the next day. Did he have victory? No, he got slaughtered. He got killed. You know what? They were false prophets. They were liars. See, when you say, when you say, that's why be careful pronouncing judgment or, or saying, I know God's judging you or I know this is what God's going to do. Be careful of doing that because you may be found out to be a liar. Huh? Be very cautious saying things like that to people. Huh? I'm just telling you, angels had steadfast statements in the Old Testament. Now look at what it says. And every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense reward. If you disobeyed the angels, you got paid payment for it. Now look what he says. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? See, he says, how much more shall we, we suffer reward, you know, judgment, if we disobey God, who's even greater? Who's greater, God or the angels? Whose message were the angels bringing? God. And whose message does God bring? God's his own. Guess what? Look at it. Do you understand? Do you see the source of the, the, the truth? It's God. See, and, and if God speaks to us personally, before he sent messages through the angels, now he sends it personal to us, we should be listening to that a whole lot more now. We should, be more, we should heed it a whole lot more. That's what Hebrews is trying to get across to us. Heed what God says. You'll find yourself in trouble if you don't. It don't matter. You can say, you can, look at, you don't even know. I, my wife and I, we've been in, in Christianity for 37 years. We, I was right away started preaching, got into ministry right away. And guess what? We've seen a lot of people say, oh, I can handle it. I can disobey. I can do what I want. And nothing's going to happen. And they're nowhere to be found anymore. They're either dead, out of the ministry, in the gutters, in the mission. I saw them in the mission. <laughs> huh? Guys who used to go to church. Hmm? What happened to them? They challenged God to his truth. See, what, are we crazy? Are we crazy? That's like, that's like, that's like uh, you know, we know God never loses, yet we tempt him so that we can try to get him to lose. You know, we tempt, we're going to challenge you, God. <laughs> I don't want to challenge God. Because God wins every time. There's no way I can figure out what he does. You know, he comes, he has a way of sneak attacking. Come up from behind you and get you. He has a way to get into your heart. He has a way to get into your family's life. He has a way to get into friends' lives and authorities over you lives. He has a way of getting into your bank account. He has a way to get into your, he has a way to get you to go bankrupt. <laughs> he has a way to make you um, uh, get your house foreclosed on. Guess what I don't want to do? Challenge him. I do not want to put a red flag in front of God and say, I dare you. <laughs> no way. I said, God, you're true. I look at his word and he said, yeah, you're true. I said, I believe that. <laughs> Why? Because I'm not challenging it. There's no way. God's true. It's steadfast. I need to listen to his word more so than the angels 
were listened to in the Old Testament. Hmm? We need to heed his warning. He's given us, he's given us, a, look, we are so blessed we got the full revelation of God's word. I don't care what these Christians out here say. There's a bunch of liberal Christians. They say we, no one has the full word of God. They're lying through their teeth. There it is, another lie. It's not steadfast. Huh? I have the full revelation of God's word. We're going to find out in the end. In the end, we're going to find out. They're going to say, well, I didn't have the full revelation of God's word. God says you're lying. So I've sent you the word of God. What, didn't you think I could preserve the word of God? He said they preserved the word of God right there. They called God a liar because you can't preserve the word of God because no one has the full word of God. They just called God a liar. So, you know, what else is it called God from there on? Hmm? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? By the way, you might want to write these, uh, these, uh, this outline right next to verse 3. How shall we, this is my outline, I, I, I did it a long time ago, but I, I thought it was uh, good enough to write it down. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Huh? It says, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. See, God had a plan. God paid for the plan. God provided for the plan. That's what that verse three is telling us. Huh? Planned, paid, and provided. What? Salvation. Hmm? Planned, paid, and provided. Salvation. Let's read verse 3 again now that you know that. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Which is at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Now how many people heard Christ? Many. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know if the, what the number would be that heard him personally. I know 500 people after he rose from the dead saw him personally. 500, wait, noted people. That means people that weren't crazy in the head. You know? People, that, people that, uh, that were like lawyers, Pharisees, huh? Or people who were professional people, doctors, saw him personally. People that they could trust their word. And they went out and spoke about it. We saw Christ rise up from the dead. The disciples. We saw him rise up. Well, who was the first one to say we saw Christ rise from the dead? Anybody know? Yes. Mary. Way to go, Ronnie. Yes. Praise the Lord. At the tomb, right? Yeah. And he went, she went and told the disciples. They didn't believe her. <laughs> Are you nuts? <laughs> You're crazy? Huh? Then Peter and, and John, I believe it was, ran to the tomb. John was faster. He got there first. And Peter, Peter ran in. You know what they did after they saw it? They went and told everybody. He rose from the dead. Because you know what happened? The word of God came to their mind that he said, I'll rise up on the third day. Hmm? <laughs> hmm? They, and then what they do? They became witnesses. You know what a witness is? Someone who's seen what has happened. You know what? We're witnesses. We've seen what happened to us in our hearts, in our lives. We're witnesses. He want to close that back door. It's opened. And that heat's going to come in here. And uh, it's already 110 outside at least. And, uh, and it's 105 in here. And we want to keep it at that. <laughs> Amen. So we become witnesses. So he paid. He, pla he paid. He, uh, he, played, he, pl he played. He planned. He paid. And he provided for salvation. That's what, what the Lord did. And then we get into our notes over here. And it says right here where it says slip in under number one. It says the warning here is drifting from the word through neglect. Okay, that word slip. Neglecting the word of God. Let me ask you a question. Have you, have you, have you forsaken God's word? Do you read it every day? Do you get up in time to read it every day? And if you don't get up in time to read it every day, do you read it before you go to bed? Take time to read it. Turn off your TV. Turn off your equipment that you have, all the, the Internet equipment and stuff, and go read your Bible. Amen. Hey. Spend time. Don't neglect it because neglect leads to slipping. Also leads to sleeping. You want to know what? That's a good sign of slipping. If I, can, if I was in here and I said, hey, I'm going to hand out $100 bills to everybody who stays awake, everyone in here would stay awake. You want to know $100 bills are on the line. But if I said, I'm going to tell you the truth from God's word, some of you fall asleep because it's not that important because you're slipping. Hmm? Fading away. It's not that important. $100 bills are important, but not 
not God's word, even though it's greater than any treasure you can find on the face of the earth. Hmm? Just telling you, stay awake. You may miss something that God has for you. Hmm? He may have it right now for you. It may be something that he planned on giving you right now. It's going to change your life, revolutionize your life. And if you don't listen, if you don't, if you're not awake, if you're not attentive, you're going to miss it. Now look what he says right here. Verse 2. For if the word uh, spoken by angels was steadfast in every transgression and disobedient received a just re recompense or reward, huh? he says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Neglect. Look, at that's, that's not on God. That's on you. It's on me. We can either neglect or we can be diligent. We make the choice. Look at we need to get in the Word of God more often than we do. I mean, we should, look at like like we're supposed to be. The Bible tells us in Hebrews ten twenty five that we're supposed to be in the we're supposed to be assembling more as the day approaches. That means when Christ's coming. Today is greater it was closer than yesterday to, to Christ's coming. Tomorrow's going to be closer. Next Sunday's going to be closer. The Sunday after that's next closer. A year from now is going to be closer if the Lord tarries. Guess what? We're not supposed to go to church less. We're supposed to go to church more. Be more faithful. Same thing with the Word of God. The closer we get into God, Christ coming, we ought to get more and more faithful to His Word. Add some uh, chapters to your reading. Huh? I know some of you. Add some words to your reading. <laughs> Add some verses to your reading. Do something. Huh? Don't neglect His Word. Don't read less today than you did yesterday or less next year than you did this year. What are you? You're supposed to be growing, right? Guess what? When I was one year old, they didn't have to pay for me at a restaurant because they knew I wouldn't eat much. But now that I'm 62 years old almost, I have to pay full price. Well, I get senior discount because they figure I'm starting to eat less, but I don't. But <laughs> let's put it this way. I eat more than I when I was one. Guess what? As you get older as a Christian, you're supposed to eat more. That means you read more. That means you're in the book more. You don't let it slip. When you start letting it slip, you start backsliding. And I already told you what God does in chastisement. Five stages of chastisement. Hmm? You have that in your notes in, in uh, lesson one. Five stages of chastisement. You need to not let it slip. Huh? That's a, that, by the way, the number one thing, I, I always ask someone I see backsliding, I ask them, have you read your Bible? Every time they say, well, I haven't read it in a while. When was the last time you read it? Oh, a month ago. How can you go a month without eating? Seriously. You're starving yourself to death spiritually. Huh? Look at it. If I said, you don't get any food for a month, I'm going to put you in a cage, that's where you're going to stay. No food, no water for a month. You know what? You're all going to go crazy on me. <laughs> you're crazy. No food. It's not happening. But I say, you don't get to read your Bible for a month. You don't get to drink from the Word of God. You don't get to eat from feast from His table. And you say, oh, okay. It's not that big of a deal. Hmm? That's what mo a lot, not most of but a lot of people will do that. Why? Because it's not important to you. You've already let it slip. Quit letting it slip. Get back on solid ground. You just start, open up the book and just start reading it again. Huh? Start somewhere. Hmm? Good thing to do. Why don't you open up the book of Psalms, start reading there, and start crying. Amen? <laughs> Amen. May your heart get broken because you neglected so great a salvation. Hmm? Look, it, it, it's, you know where I out see so? I preached a message on God's the greatest sower. And that's not S-E-W-E-R. It's S-O-E-R. For God so loved the world. Don't neglect so great a salvation. God, God escalates his salvation up here. Some people may save you from a car wreck. Some may save you from a burning building. But God saved your life. <laughs> so great a salvation. Yeah, if someone saved you out of a burning house and drug you out and saved your life, you'd be hugging them, kissing them. You talk to the media. You send them a letter. You buy them a present. You give them a gift. You do whatever. To thank him for it. God saved your life. <laughs> what are you going to do for it? 
Or maybe you're not saved. That's why you don't do anything for him. And you know it in your heart. Hmm? Or maybe you don't really appreciate what he's done. You did at one time. You don't anymore. Hmm? You want to know why? Because you let it slip. Hmm? It becomes not important anymore. Husbands do it in marriage. Wives do it in marriage. Kids do it in, in obedience to parents. Parents do it in raising children. Let the, let the discipline slip. Hmm? Amen. Just letting you know. Amen. <laughs> hmm? He says, he says uh, we, we read here, it says, the warning here is drifting from the word of God through neglect to let the things which we have heard slip is to forget them and let them go. Carelessness in a Christian's life. Carelessness. I mean, how careless can you be? You know, here's careless. You let your baby walk around a pool without a fence around it. Careless. You let your kid, child go out into the ocean by itself. Yeah. We went up to the ocean. You know what? There, people die all the time at the ocean because there's an undertow. That tide starts going out, it drags them right under. They drown. Right at the shore! I remember when we were at Hiles Anderson, Rhonda, and one of the teachers took the kids to Lake Michigan. He said, no one go into the water till I park the car. So they all got out and said, okay, teacher, okay, okay. So they all got out, they went down on the beach. He parked the car. By the time he got over to the beach, one of the kids was dead. One of, he went into the water. The undertow took him under, and he drowned. Washed him up the shore. He was dead. They couldn't, re they couldn't uh, resurrect him, so to say. Hmm? He was seven years old. He was on James's baseball team. Remember that? Hmm? Amen. That's what happens. See, that's what we do. <laughs> that's what we do. We let it slip. We, we neglect. We're careless. Hmm? That teacher wasn't the same after that. He, he kicked himself for not parking the car with the kids in it and then getting out. Hmm? It's, it's, but it's not, carelessness. My kids, <laughs> they don't get to do the, that kind of stuff. They just don't. Look, you say, well, you're too hard. No, I'm, I'm less careless. <laughs> My kids are still breathing. <laughs> And there's people, there's parents, and, and I'm not saying it can't happen to me. I'm just saying there's parents that are kicking themselves today and, and sorrowful. I remember when my nephew died. He died because he had a heart condition. He was born with half a heart, and they rebuilt his heart when he was just days old. And they said he don't, probably won't live past a year. He's 12 years old, almost 13. And they wanted to do another heart surgery on him. He had like, I don't know, it's a heart surgery every year or something like that. For these 12 years he's alive. And uh, so they would do a heart surgery. After The last heart surgery he had, he didn't make it. 12 years old, almost 13. And he, he died. I was there when he gave up his last breath. I said, Chris, if God's calling you, if the Lord's calling you, go with him. Because he was saved. When he died, immediately there was regrets. My brother-in-law said, I should have never had him have this surgery. My sister said, oh, if we only knew. Okay. Then my brother-in-law, Rhonda's brother, worked for University of Oregon, their hospital there, and he says, we do that surgery all the time. Washington, University of Washington, this, it's experimental with them. I wish we had known that before he had the surgery. So he got to gone down there and had the surgery. Hmm? Okay. Carelessness. And that's how we look at it. We're careless. Look, the whole point is this. You go ahead and let the word of God slip. You let that salvation slip that you have, that God's given you. In the end, you're going to have regrets. And you're going to say, what was I thinking? You'll stand before God and say, what was I thinking? Hmm? Don't let that happen to you. Take it. Don't take it for granted. Take it for real. Amen. Look over in the book of Matthew. Some of you should already be there because you know what's in the notes. Amen. So I give you notes. So you can look on your own and uh, help you out. Matthew chapter 13, what is verse 3 said? And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some, sells, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Hmm? They came and devoured them up, it says. Verse 7 says, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Isn't that interesting? 
Huh? Look at verse 18. It says this. It says, uh, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Verse 22 says, uh, It says, He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choked the word and he became unfruitful. You know what it's saying? It's saying the guy was careless. See, we go out, we, we, we embrace the world, the things of the world. Well, you know what? It's not going to hurt. I've heard preachers say, I'm not going to have anything against you going after the things of the world. If I named the preachers, you'd be shocked. You weren't, because you probably weren't paying attention. I was. My ears perk up when they say stuff like that. What? That is leading someone astray. You're not going after the things of the world. That my Bible tells you not to. Because what happens? It chokes out the, the word. That's what it says. Did not what it says? Verse 22, He also that received the seed amongst the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this world and the deceitful of the riches choked the word and he became unfruitful. You know what he did? He let it slide. He let it slip. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't that important. He got busy caring for the things out there instead of the things right here in this book. He cared more for the God of this world than the God of heaven. And what happened is it slipped, and that's what happens. He gets, it chokes it out. He becomes unfruitful, Christian. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you witnessed and won someone? When was the last time the Holy Spirit of God spoke to you, and the Holy Spirit been working through you, and the fruit of the Spirit's been evident in you? Wait till you hear the message tonight about temptation, or temperance, I mean, and how temptation squashes temperance. Huh? Hey, how you know the fruit of the spirit of temperance? Hmm? It's the hardest one for anyone, any one of us, to project from us. One preacher said that's probably why it's the last one God mentions, because it's hard. Most Christians can't master temperance. Hmm? You know, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. It's number eight. New beginnings. You go ahead and uh, you go ahead and, get, and let your life be temperate. Have temperance in your life. Guess what? You'll have a new beginning, all right. There'll be something different that happened to people. Hmm? See, it's not about us. Look at Luke chapter eight, verse fourteen. Eight fourteen says, "And that which fell among thorns are they which." When they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. It says it in a different way. It's basically the same thing. Huh? Got all caught up in the things of the way. He was reckless. God saved you from this old world, saved you out of this old world. Why do we go back and we embrace it? We're, we're supposed to embrace the word of God, not to embrace the world. But we do it anyway. All of this have some time in our life as a Christian embrace the world. And the more you embrace the world, the less fruitful you'll be. Because you're going to see no use in winning someone to cry. You're going to see, well, you know what? We're in the age of apostasy. That's why we're in the age of apostasy. <laughs> but as Christians have become careless. Now, there's a horrible spirit amongst Christians now. And in churches. Used to go into churches. I remember when we traveled. Going to churches, man, they were lively. They were. They were life. You know what churches now in the last 20 years? Dead. <laughs> Have died. The same churches that were lively 20 years ago are now dead. They don't exist or they're dead services. Preaching's horrible. Singing's horrible. People aren't excited. Souls aren't being won. Well, that wouldn't be our church preacher. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> so how do you know? Because when I first came here, man, it was lively. We came here. We got all excited. It's winning souls, bringing souls in. We had souls coming down the aisle all the time, souls being saved all the time. And, and the men that were in our church, they actually came to me and said, what, what's this all about? <laughs> what, what, what's happening here? I said, the Holy Spirit of God, something you've never seen? <laughs> huh? And it was lively. You know what it is now? Did it. Hmm? Like the old, the old doctor said, whiskey. <laughs> they got him some whiskey. They thought they were going to put it on the man who was wounded, who got shot. He kicks the guy, says dead, and just starts drinking the whiskey. That's what's happening in the churches. We just kick the dead ones and just start drinking. 
Our life is a wreck in churches nowadays. Yeah, preacher, this ain't very this ain't very encouraging. I'm not trying to encourage you. I'm trying to encourage you to see that you're you're needing help. You're sick. You don't think you're sick, but you are. Huh? <laughs> Amen. It says right here, remember the theme of Hebrews? Does anybody remember? It's right there. What's that? Yep. It's about perfection. Mm -hmm. It said, let us go on unto perfection. That is the theme. We are supposed to work, we, we read Hebrews, study Hebrews. Why? So we can be led to perfection. God rebuking us now, don't let it slip. Huh? Let's go on to perfection. Get in the Word of God. Be diligent to be in the Word. I remember um, there was a guy in our church here. And I remember when I came, I was a wreck after I got done talking to him. <laughs> and I go, ah, oh, man, what did I do? I sit down and talk to this guy. You know what I started doing? I started going to his house and telling him we need to read his Bible, need to pray, blah, 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 and, and encouraged him that way and so forth. You know, he started doing that. He'd get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Now listen, he had to be to work, I think it was at 5 or 6. And he'd get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and read his Bible, pray, then go to work. You know what I noticed about him after he did that for a while? He started changing. He started actually witnessing to people, and winning people, and loving people, <laughs> huh? serving God. And all of a sudden, he was different. He started getting rid of his worldly stuff. Hmm. You know what happened to him? He quit doing that. He went right back to where he was. Hmm? My point is this. Are you back to where you was? <laughs> You're back to where you was, and you probably quit too. Hmm? Aren't you, doesn't it bother you to be not growing? Doesn't it bother you that you went back to where you used to be? So you never stay neutral. You backslide. That's what it's called. God talks about backsliding. He talks called it slipping. Where are you slipping to? Huh? The angels gave the law. And that's what they did in chapter 2. Let's go on to numeral 2 in this. Here in verse 3 and in verse 4, the word of the Lord is confirmed. Okay. And how is it confirmed? Look at what it says. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord. See who's speaking? By the Lord. And was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders. God also bearing them witness with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his will, his own will. Now let me ask you a question. What was happening? Hmm? What was happening? Anybody know? He says uh, he, his word was confirmed by those who were hearing. He's speaking the word of God. The Lord is. That's Jesus Christ. Speaks the word of God. People heard him. They confirmed it. And then it says here, it says right here, so then he confirmed them, right here, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. So he confirms the word, God confirms the word by giving these gifts to the people. But do we have those same gifts now? No, because it's by God's word only. That's what it says in chapter 1 of Hebrews. See, we want to know why he gave those gifts to the disciples and the men that, that heard him preach? To prove that it was God. See, now, today, false teachers want to prove it's God, but they're too late. They're in the wrong dispensation. <laughs> this is not a time for speaking in tongues, words of knowledge, speaking to Christ personally, huh? seeing visions, the dreams, and all that. This isn't the time. They're outside the wrong, they're, they're in the wrong dispensation, outside the, dis, the dispensation of this time of grace. It's by God's word now. So what they do, by the way, you go to these people who speak in tongues, who, uh, who see visions and have words of knowledge and all this, ask them what the Word of God says. You can find out almost every one of them don't know what the Word of God says. 
You know what they've done a long time ago? They let the word of God slip. And so what they did is they picked up something else that God did not ordain. And they started using it as a replacement for God's word. See, for Christ. If it was up to them. Now, now, now here, let me give you an illustration so you know I'm telling you the truth. Because whoever knows anything about the Pentecostals, you know this is true. You're not saved unless you speak in tongues. Who, did, who what did tongues just replace? Christ in the cross. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They don't even know they've replaced him. They're that deceived. And God says he speaks to us now by his son. You take it for whatever it is, but that's what it is. <laughs> that's why I have, no, I have no use for those religious folks like that. I'd like to see them get saved, and very few of them do, because they'll argue till they're dead about what they believe. Like the, like the ap apostolics, I, uh, you can't get to heaven unless you're baptized. They believe in baptism and regeneration. They just replaced Christ with baptism. I don't know what the Bible says. They're not using the word of God. Now, the word of God they do use, they twist it. And they make it fit their agendas and their doctrines. I'm just telling you, that's the way it is. But God says right here, the word of God, the Lord was confirmed. The word of the Lord was confirmed. And this is what he did, and he gave the disciples. That's why they had tongues. And, you know, after they, they got the Spirit, Holy Spirit of God, they spoke in tongues. Huh? They, they were able to heal. You know, the shadow of Peter just crossed, crossed somebody, and they got healed. The man was at the, the, man was at the temple, and he was, uh, he was an invalid. And uh, he wanted gold from Peter. Peter said, gold and silver have I none. But what did he give him? He gave him healing and healed him. He got up and he started walking around, going to the temple. People thought, whoa, isn't this a guy who was just outside begging for money? <laughs> huh? But you know what? That's not done today. Very rarely you see anything like that. This Benny Hinn stuff is a joke. Huh? I want my gold now. Huh? That's what he said. He goes around and he, he hits someone on the head. They fall over because it's a setup. They had a guy. They actually had a preacher who had a who stood on a steel plate and it was underneath the carpet on the platform, and they ran electricity into it. And he was grounded so he wouldn't get shocked, but the electricity went through him and he touched a person. And they fall over. Something's wrong with that, isn't it? They're trying to they're trying to do what Christ did, but they do it in worldly ma fashions and manners. So men would believe. That's deception. That is, that is wrong. That is, that is criminal to God. Someone needs to stand up for God. Amen. <laughs> Look what verse 3 says. Let's, let's back up to verse 3. It says this. How shall we escape? What's that mean? The unanswerable question. If penalties were inflicted over disobedience to the world, of angels, how much more is punishment deserved for disobedience to the word of the Son, since he is so much better than the angels? Look over in Hebrews 10. This is after he tells us to be in, be in church more often, you know, the assembly of the people. By the way, I don't know how many times I've had people disagree that this is talking about the church assembling, but... Uh, that's what it is. And, you know, everybody wants to argue, now the church isn't a building. <laughs> well, let me put it this way. You're not the church by yourself. In fact, the church is a body of believers, a called out body of believers. That's what the church is. It's not one individual. It's a body like this right here. It's called the church. And if you don't come to the assembly, you're not being part of the church. Someone said, I had a lady that was in our church here. Well, I can go out in the woods and I'll worship God and the church will be worshiping. Said, no, you're wrong. She got all mad, attitude. Because <laughs> she was being taught, she had a home, home uh, Bible study with some heretic preacher. The guy was a heretic. And she was listening to him. And she thought he was the greatest thing on the face of the earth when he was a wolf. And she didn't even get it. She didn't know. She, she, it's because she forsook God's word. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. What's it say here? 
He that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. Do you understand? That, look at this. He says, trodden underfoot the Son of God, the blood of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit of God. You want to know what happened there? Why is that? What is God telling us right there? You go ahead and let the Word of God slip. You go ahead and disobey it. And He says, and that's what you're doing. That's how God sees it. I tell you, open up your eyes and see how God sees. He sees you stomping all over Christ. He sees you stomping on the blood that sanctifies you. He sees you crushing the Holy Ghost under his feet, under your feet. You know what he's saying? He said, that's what I see. You're dis disrespectful. Now let me ask you a question. Which one of us in here has right to be disrespectful to our God, to Christ, to the blood, and to the Holy Ghost? You have, you're so holy that you can do that. Are you more holy than Christ? How about the blood? How about the Holy Ghost? Neither am I. So when we neglect the word, when we decide we're going to skip reading, skip studying, skip obedience, then that's what we do. I don't understand why we would do that. We, that's, why, that's why people don't fear God. We don't take him serious. We don't take him serious. Hmm. Look at uh, chapter 2 of Hebrews back there. Look back up to verse 2. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast in every, trans every transgression and disobedience, that's every disobedience, received a just recompense for reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? So every transgression, every disobedience has a recompense of reward. Now, wait a minute. Who's he talking to? Hmm? I'm getting some chocolate water. Hang on. It's coffee. Faith's going, chocolate water? Can I get some? <laughs> huh? What's, who's he talking to? Who is the Lord talking to here? The church. He's talking to the Hebrew Christians, the Jew, Jewish Christians. Huh? And he's saying... You're not going to escape. You think that's changed? I believe Paul wrote this. I believe he's writing to the, the church age. And I think and I believe that there is a judgment to Christians that want to go ahead and do this to God. You think, look, I tell people, I say, you think God just sits back and says it's okay to do what you're doing when you're rebelling against him, when you're... Sinning against him when you're disobedient to your God? You're transgressing, trespassing against God? Like the sin I was talking about this morning? You think God's sitting back saying, oh, they're doing a good job. <laughs> oh, we just let it slide. You don't let your kids slide when they do wrong. You know where we, look at, I, so people say, well, that's, that's a human being doing that. No, where do we learn it from? We learned how to be a good father and good mother from God. God chastens his own. So do we. Say, he chases our own kid. Is there a kid walking down the street and he throws a rock and, you know, and he hits a window on a car here? You know, I may say, hey, you're going to have to pay for that. that may be, but you know what? I'm not going over and spanking him. <laughs> I'm not dragging him into the house and putting him in the corner. <laughs> He's not my kid. Hmm? I may call his parents. If I know who his parents are, hmm? and if I don't know his parents, I'm probably not getting a phone number from him <laughs> to call him. And if I get a number, it's probably not a real one. <laughs> you know how that goes. Hmm? Amen. But God's going to chasten you. He's not going to let you get away with it. You think you're getting away with it. You're not getting away with it. I think I get away with it. I'm not getting away with it. If I, go, if I do contrary to God's word, I'm going to have to pay the price still. Everybody does. God, look at God's not a respecter of men in judgment. That's what he says. See, everybody wants to stop at God's not a respecter of men and leave it at that, but that's not what he's talking about. Not a respecter of men in judgment. 
Bible says he respected David, but not in judgment. When David did wrong, he, God was going to kill him. God had a respect for Moses, but when he, Moses did wrong, he was going to kill him. In fact, God didn't let Moses go into the promised land. That's how much he didn't have respect for a man who sinned. And he said, he told Moses why he didn't let him go in the promised land. Because he rebelled against God. Hmm? He said, that's what kept you out of the promised land, sin. <laughs> hmm? Aaron didn't get to go in either. Why? Because of sin. Even though he did the work of God, he, got, he went into the Holy of Holies. But he sinned against God. And God said, nope, you don't get to go. You'll die right out here <laughs> in the wilderness with all of everyone else. Huh? And neither should he do for Christians. Just because you're saved doesn't keep you out of trouble. What keeps you out of trouble is walking with God. Having a personal relationship and being close with him. Huh? Be obedient to him. You know what? That's what preaching is all about. Trying to get you to do that. <laughs> trying to get you focused to do that. Trying to stir something up inside of you to do it. But they always say teaching will help you to learn. But preaching convicts you to change. Let's see. That's what it's supposed to do. What does it say here in this next paragraph? How shall we escape? How shall we escape? <laughs> in chapter 12 of Hebrews, verse 25. This is talked in doctrinally. Who's he talking to? Verse 25, see that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, how much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven? Who is he talking to? He's talking to us, a believer. Huh? Wait, look, he spoke to us. The one from heaven spoke to our hearts and saved our souls. Huh? And then we neglect him? It's like this. If he saves your soul and you neglect your salvation, how much more are we accountable and, and deserve to be judged? Seriously. He says he comes to the church first, the house of God, and judges them. Why? Because we know better. We have had our eyes open. Our spirit's been awakened. We had a dead spirit. Now we have a live spirit. We've been awakened spiritually. We know truth. We, we know the spirit of God. We felt his presence. We've, we've experienced the light of God, and then we go ahead and neglect the truth. Hmm? <laughs> We're in trouble then. In chapter 2, verse 3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Confir how do we know it's confirmed? Because you're a believer. Once you got saved, you believe. You confirmed to you. See, you couldn't understand that truth unless you were saved. Look at the lost man, the natural man, cannot understand this. Lost man looks at the preaching and calls it what? What does the Bible say? Foolishness. But see, it was confirmed to us by the men that heard Christ and saw him. We see, we see Peter and we see John and we see Paul and you know, we see we see Matthew and we, we read we read the books and we say, well, look at that, and it stirs our heart. Because we're saved. The Holy Ghost uses it. Speaks to it. When you were lost, you read it. It didn't stir your heart. And you're like, whatever. Now it stirs our heart. We hear it. We go, well, that's God. That's our God. That's our Savior. Huh? <laughs> huh? So what is he doing? Doctrinally, he's talking to the Christian. It refers to us. We. Look at what it says. It says right here. How shall we? Now, I believe this is Paul speaking. And he just added himself in to this. He put his name under there too. We. That's like me saying, we are all in church. We're all here in the preaching. We're all got a Bible. We all know Christ. Hmm? We just added me and everybody in here. He says, we, how shall we escape? Talking about all of it. He's talking about the Christian. Is Paul a Christian? Yes. Huh? So don't think that I'm telling you something that's not true. This is true. This is happening. Never neglect God's word. I believe there's Christians that are dead today because they did. They forsook God. I think God took them through the channels of chastening, and when they got to the end, they still wouldn't listen. 
they, they became useful, useless to him. He couldn't use them anymore. They didn't want them to be used. Now, God only knows when the time's up for each individual. Some people you say, how come they're still alive? <laughs> how come they're still being used? Or how come, you know, God is uh, tolerating what they're doing in their life? Huh? Because God only knows. I don't know. I don't know who, uh, when, when it comes to the end of a man's time of uh, usefulness. Hmm? We don't even know when my usefulness will be up. Hmm? So how am I going to know if, when someone else's usefulness is up? I think of Mark in the Bible. Mark said he quit. You've read about that, didn't you? Mark quit. Who was happy about that? Everybody? <laughs> how many here know that Paul wasn't happy about it? Paul got mad. You say, how do you know? Because it says the contention was heated. He got mad at Barnabas because Barnabas wanted to bring Mark. And he said, oh, no, Mark's a quitter. We're not taking Mark. He goes, well, I'm taking Mark. No, you're not. <laughs> they went back and forth, argued about it. Finally, Paul says, let's split ways. You go your way with Mark, and I'll go my way with Silas. So they did. Huh? You know what Paul was saying? He's finished. He's finished. God's done with him. Paul gets to the end of his life. He's about 80 years old. <laughs> He's in prison, 2 Timothy. And he says, Mark's profitable for the ministry. <laughs> Mark was still alive. You know what? You know what Mark did? He wrote the book of Mark after that. Barnabas restored him to God. God wasn't done with him. Do you understand? God only knows. Paul was trying to put stand in the place of God and saying, "We're done. We're not using him." Nope, nope, nope. He's not coming with me. Hmm? So God used it to have Paul and Silas and Barnabas and Mark. They went their separate ways and preached. Spread the gospel. Hmm? I'm just telling you, we just don't know. You know what? Someone rebels today, God may take their life today. They rebel today, 30 years from down the road, they may still be in rebellion, but God's still holding on. <laughs> I have no idea why. Hmm? It's interesting. I wrote this in here. This verse makes good inspirational preaching. To the lost people, but it should be remembered that all preaching is not good doctrine. <laughs> That's the truth, too. I've heard some preaching. I'm going, really? Where do you? Oh, my soul. <laughs> it is good preaching. It inspires, inspiring preaching. <laughs> huh? They know how to preach, but it isn't stock, doctrinal. Hmm? In 37 years of hearing lots of preaching, not just preaching, but hearing lots of preaching, I've heard stuff, I'm going, that's not doctrinal. <laughs> oh, amen. But it was inspiring. You listen, you go, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> huh? They had some bits and pieces that were good. and I mean, it inspired you. It actually got your attention and actually got you thinking. Hmm? Amen. And then it says here, and all doctrine is not necessary good preaching. By the way, that's true because you can't, there's doctrine, you just it's, try to preach it impossible to preach it because it's not preachable it's it's it's, it's teachable huh it's teachable but not preachable see so you gotta be careful and you, you know what and we are dealing with men and I'm, I'm not talking heretics i'm not talking wolves i'm just talking men in general that sometimes men are they not sinners and i believe most preachers for the most part are trying to do what's right most good preachers, most independent Baptist preachers, I think, are doing trying to do what's right. And uh, I don't think they I don't think you find a bunch of them trying to destroy people. I think they're trying to do best for the people. I mean, when Brother Tenney comes in, look, like, you don't understand. I love Brother Tenney to death, but there's probably a handful of messages I didn't agree with that he preached. Mm -hmm. I even questioned him later. Uh, but you know, I still love Brother Tenney, and guess what? I got some stuff out of it still. I said, he's not a he's not trying to hurt you. Same with Brother Dean. Say, they're not trying to hurt you. They want to help you. They, in fact, that's the first thing they say to me. I want to help you people. I want to help the people. And I believe that with all my heart. That's what they came to do. They didn't come to try to make you mess your life up, <laughs> huh? 
And they got a message they believe God put on their heart, and they preach it. I said, preach what God put on your heart. And who knows what God's doing with that message? Let's see. So praise the Lord. <laughs> well, we'll finish right there for right now, and we'll, we'll pick up right there. And uh, you say, how do you, how do you know? This, you know, the book of Hebrews is very, uh, very good for our, for our lives, amen? Help us as believers maybe keep us straight. <laughs> focused amen well let's let's pray our heavenly father we thank you lord that we could be here in this house lord thank you lord for the word of god and none of us are perfect that's for sure boy lord i thank you for the word of god that helps keep us straight as much as it can and lord uh, we know that if we just follow it all the way and follow the word word for word and perfectly uh, as it's written and what you intended we sure be a whole lot farther off and a lot better off, Lord, if we would just listen and do what it says. God, help us. Lord, if we haven't been following you, Lord, I pray that we'll make a decision today, tonight, Lord, after the preaching tonight, to, to make a decision to just change and be better, be more diligent, and not to neglect the salvation you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen.